So, guys, uh, thanks uh, everyone to be here with us today. We have the pleasure to be presenting our Silicon Valley Connection webinar series. So, my name is Alexis. I'm the COO at Compasso UOL. Uh, we may have met with most of you guys here today already. Uh, we have the pleasure to introduce today Stackery. Uh, Stackery is a very innovative company uh, that is part of the HWVP uh, investment portfo portfolio. Uh, HWVP is one of the largest um, uh, enterprise software fund uh, investment funds uh, in the world with a huge experience experience in helping some of the most innovative companies uh, in the world, especially in Silicon Valley, to develop uh, their business. And Stackery is one of uh, the most uh, uh, successful uh, companies that we have been talking to uh, in these conversations with AGWVP. So we have here today with us uh, Tim and Chase from uh, Stackery. And j before introducing them, I just would like to uh, uh, do a one minute uh, reminder about Compasso's business to all of you. So we all of our team, our 1,650 uh, professionals are very excited to be serving you as customers and helping you in your digital transformation. Uh, in the transformation of your business every day. Uh, we have been expanding our portfolio, covering all state-of-the-art technologies that on a day-to-day -day we believe are the key enablers for digital transformation and for disrupting new industries. And we are uh, very proud of, uh, in the past few years, have been helping all of you uh, in your transformation projects. So all of our team sa says hello to you today. Uh, we are really thankful for your time and your attention in be here with us today. We hope you have a very good experience. And so now I would pass uh, to Chase and Tim from Stackery so that they can introduce themselves and move forward with our webinar. Thanks, Alexi. Botaji. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> it's uh, we're really pleased to be part of this. So thank you for the the nice introduction, uh, Alexi, and thanks to all of you for for your time. Uh, my name is Tim Zonka. I'm the CEO of Stackery, and with me is Chase Douglas, our co-founder and CTO. And over the course of the next bit, we will walk through uh, a bit of a, an overview on what we see happening in the market, how we work with organizations like you know both Compasso as well as organizations like yours as they go through this transformation that Alexi talked about. Chase will show you a little bit of what our product looks like that as it helps customers go through this journey and then we'll talk about some specific customers that leverage our technology as well as some other modern cloud technologies to enable their their transformation. <clears throat> So where I'd like to start is talking a, a bit about something that is not lost on any of you. If you work with Compasso, if you are on a webinar like this one, um, one of the things that's apparent to you is that today <clears throat> app, uh, business is application driven. <clears throat> I'll continue, which is what we see is that the organizations we work with share a belief that business is application driven. And if you're on a webinar like this, <clears throat> you're here because your organization is um, somewhere on your transformation journey. You might call it digital transformation or DevOps or agile IT, but whatever you call it, <clears throat> the fundamental idea behind it is that you're leveraging technology, you're modernizing technology so that you can better engage and provide a better experience for your customers, your partners, your employees, ultimately to innovate faster, be more efficient, increase your, your profits, reduce your costs. And it's this nexus of how people engage with technology that organizations going through transformation are looking to harness. Now, one of the big shifts that we see is that companies 
still waste way too much time, way too much effort, and way too many people resources on what we call plumbing. This is the underlying infrastructure that is required to run applications that you give to your customers or your employees or your partners. And with some of the most modern web technologies, there's no need to waste so much expensive and time consuming resources on this underlying infrastructure. What we see is that leading companies are starting to adopt serverless technologies uh, in order to really focus on differentiating for their customers, bringing out new innovative solutions that focus on solving very specific use cases, delivering value to the people using that technology and wasting zero time, you know, zero money, zero effort, zero resources on all of the underlying unnecessary complex and in, in most cases, really cumbersome infrastructure. And <clears throat> though this new technology, uh, serverless and managed services, makes it really easy to focus on the value that you're providing to your customers. Um, and it's way easier than delivering a similar sort of application would have been you know, five years ago or surely a decade ago. It's still not trivial and it's, it's not just uh, simple if you do it alone. And so the focus that Stackery has is we help people adopt this technology and do it in a really easy way, in a really quick way and most importantly, in a really safe way, especially for enterprises that have rigorous government governance, security and compliance needs. <clears throat> so Stackery, and Chase will show you this in a moment, is a serverless platform built for teams and in particular enterprise teams that need to design, develop and deliver these modern applications. There's three parts to the platform that you're going to see Chase walk through. The first one is all around architecting and designing your applications. So we give users a really straightforward and simple way to architect their modern applications, do it extremely fastly or quickly with an intuitive, it's almost like a, a virtual whiteboard where you drag and drop elements of your application onto a whiteboard and it builds that uh, application out for you. Then once that's architected, and you've been able to put your, you know, your, your security controls for you know, which resource can talk to other resources into that architecture, we provide a set of tooling for your developers to build it really quickly so they can build and test those applications um, and do it in a secure way. And then finally, there's a set of automation capabilities that allows you to have consistent security, governments and CICD automation from you know, initial, let's say security vulner vulnerability verification all the way out through your continuous deployment. You can define all your environments in the cloud. You can make sure you protect them in the right sort of way. And from initial architecture through development, and then finally through the push to production, you have all of that in one cohesive platform. Now, as people build these applications, especially in a serverless world, one of the things that I think people will often kind of confuse is they'll say, oh, well, you know, what we're, we're building an application with Lambda, which is AWS's serverless function. But what we found is that the most progressive organizations, they build applications with a whole set of managed services, not just Lambda, but they have you know, API gateways, they have data layers, they have you know, tables and queuing. And so Stackery helps organizations build modern cloud applications with dozens of AWS managed services. And the serverless Lambda function is just one of the many that our customers build applications out of. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is hand it over to Chase. He's going to walk through what this platform looks like and uh, explain how our customers use it. And then after that, we'll wrap up with some examples of some of the success that our customers have seen across different industries as they implement Stackery and help with it with their digital transformation. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, today I'd like to show you a little bit about what it's like to build and deliver these modern styles of applications. Here we're seeing an architectural overview of a single page application, uh, which at this point has a couple of different terms that you may have heard. Uh, single page app, SPA, maybe Jamstack for JavaScript API and markup uh, as your application architecture. And we'll take a look briefly soon uh, at all the different components of this and how you actually piece it together. But to ground us a little bit, 
The application that this deploys is this fun little demo app called Wild Rides, which gives me the ability to, um, as though I was uh, calling a, a uh, Uber or a Lyft car to uh, come and pick me up, I can request a unicorn to be sent to my location. So uh, this allows me, now oh, I need to re-sign in apparently. I apologize, there we go. Got some authentication uh, issues. This allows me to request a unicorn using a REST API route that makes a request to my backend. It's just a simple little trivial demo application that we put together to help illustrate how you can piece together the entirety of your front end and your back end using a serverless architecture. So what does this look like in practice? Inside of any application that you're going to build in a serverless architecture pattern, you're putting together both the infrastructure pieces and the source code as one piece that's deployed together as a single asset. This is a little different from previous ways in which uh, software was developed, oftentimes independently from the infrastructure resources that that software ran on, whether it was in a data center or in an AWS uh, set of like EC2 instances, let's say. So here we treat your, your code as both the infrastructure and the source code. Every application that you develop with Stackery, it's backed by a Git repository. Here we have this application backed inside of GitHub. And inside of that is a template that de defines all of the infrastructure pieces that put together uh, enable your application to, to run inside of AWS. That's this template here, which is in a format called CloudFormation, uh, and actually an extension of that called SAM, the serverless application model. This is a somewhat simple application, and yet it still has almost 300 lines of extremely dense infrastructure as code uh, YAML, this markdown. And the markdown is something that uh, if you are trying to build serverless applications by hand um, across a team of developers, every one of those developers is going to have to become proficient and quickly be able to scan these template files to understand how the infra infrastructure is related to one another. Instead, inside of Stackery, we help you lay that out in a Canvas representation, giving you a sense of how the resources are grouped together and how they relate to one another. So for example, I have this S3 bucket, which is where the website is hosted out of. I've got that configured for website hosting here. The content though, for how uh, the content gets uploaded to that bucket is specified in this website build project, where I specify in my Git repository, a location, source slash site. If we go and look inside of that, we'll see that it holds all of the information, all of the, the static assets for my website that get built at deployment time and then uploaded uh, to the, uh, the S3 bucket to be served. So that's our front end. We also need a back end to request this unicorn to be sent to us. That's handled by this uh, REST HTTP API. This has an authorizer using Cognito user pools, which is AWS's own authentication service uh, akin to say Auth0. And it also, once a request has been authorized, it has a route here where when a client makes a request to uh, request a, a unicorn, it invokes this Lambda function that uploads a record to a DynamoDB table about the unicorn that was requested. And it also makes a request to a third party API. And to do so, it uses an API key. This is to actually request a, a unicorn from the stable service. And so we get that API key from a secret stored inside of AWS Secrets Manager in an environment specific namespace that we'll look at in a minute. 
This makes it really easy for me to understand what is going on, how the different pieces interrelate. And if I was a developer and say one of my tasks was to extend the functionality, to add to this uh, request unicorn function so that it uh, sends a record to an SQS queue for some batch processing. I've got the ability to do this very simply as well. I can pop open our resource palette and this shows us the, you know, about two dozen different resource types that comprise the bulk of modern application resources built primarily with serverless technologies, although not exclusively. For example, there are many cases where people still need to uh, interact with resources inside of virtual networks, VPCs. So we still have a ability to easily help you configure VPCs, uh, traditional databases, um, databases of varying different types, graph databases, all the kinds of things that um, may be uh, both serverless or non-serverless, but used inside of modern application development scenarios. So if we go back and we said, okay, I'm a new developer, I need to add an SQS queue to my application. I can quickly drop a new SQS queue into my canvas and I can wire it up. What this has done, surely it added the SQS queue to my template, but that's on the simpler side of things. By wiring it up from the request unicorn function, we have also made sure that this function can find the queue, in effect, the, uh, the queue URL, which is what's necessary when you're using the AWS SDK to send messages to the queue. So I can find it as we have specified a new environment variable so that when my Lambda function runs, I can really easily locate the URL of the SQS queue. Further, if you've dealt with AWS, uh, even in uh, you know, playing around, you've noticed that you have to manage IAM policies. These are permissions that determine whether one resource can interact with another resource. So by wiring up the function to the SQS queue, we have added a permission policy to this function, allowing it to send messages directly to this SQS queue and only this queue. That allows you to lock down your permission set to be least privileged. It prevents the possibility that if you have a vulnerability in any aspect of your application, say in a Lambda function, that uh, requests the unicorn, that at worst, it can only interact with this one SQS queue and the one DynamoDB table. So that gives you a peace of mind that you've got a much stronger uh, mechanism for providing another layer of defense in depth for security. So as I've developed this out, that all those changes have been mapped into my CloudFormation template here. One thing I briefly want to touch on, though, we've been looking at this application as an application that we've sort of built from scratch. You saw it as it was primarily built up, but all of these resources are resources that you can build from our palette. Sometimes, though, you may need to import a project that has already been developed in CloudFormation. Many of our customers, they do choose us to build out their newer projects, but they also need us to integrate with their existing projects. And that's where Stackery can also shine in that you can take your existing CloudFormation projects and you can import them and easily be able to replicate this look and feel that enables developers to collaborate. Over here, I've got an example template of a uh, what AWS has put out called a connected vehicle solution. It's a demo that they created. 2,500 lines of CloudFormation code, and I'm going to paste that into my template here. When I go back to visualize it, Stackery will dutifully render out after parsing all the relationships between the resources. So now, if this is a existing application and I'm a new developer on the team, 
maybe I've been tasked with figuring out why records are being inserted into the DTC DynamoDB table incorrectly. I now am able to quickly understand that there are two functions that interface with that table, the DTC service function and the connected vehicle helper, helping me narrow down the scope of what I need to search for to figure out why records are being inserted improperly into this table. I also can step into resources that even us at Stackery, that we don't have a visual editing representation for, because although we support out of the box visual editing of the most common two dozen types of resources, AWS has 168 services now, uh, if I understand correctly. It changes every day, it seems. So there are many services that you might need. Our palette can get you 95 to 99% of the way there for most applications. But maybe you need something like an IoT topic rule, and that's okay. You can drop, drop that in under what we call an anything resource, where you can plop in customized cloud formation to help you configure your application. And when you do so, we have intelligence enough to know that an IoT topic rule is more than just the rule itself. It also has a role associated with it. And that role here gets grouped with the same resource. The role itself also has a managed policy attached to it. So we're helping you understand things at a human logical level rather than a raw resource level like many other tools provide. Once we've gone through the challenge of architecting and designing our stack, the next thing we need to do is develop on it. That's where Stackery comes in and provides tools around um, a local development process we call Cloud Local. The idea here, and we don't have enough time to fully demo this today, but the idea is you'll deploy out a version of your stack to an environment. Once you've deployed that out, you can then locally iterate on any given function in your stack invoking it locally on your laptop after assuming the same credentials that that function would have, the IAM role credentials, if it were running in the real Lambda service, and after downloading the environment values, which are used for service discovery. That allows you to rapidly iterate on a function and have it behave exactly the same way as it does in real life on AWS but quickly iterate on your own laptop. So when you make changes, you'll see them as they run on your laptop in a matter of seconds, instead of having to deploy out and take a couple of minutes every time you want to validate a change. For anyone who's done serverless development, this is a huge time saver. This would be happy to show you uh, later on, one-on-one, um, -on -one, any details about how we rapidly help with this cloud local development process. Once you've done some of the this uh, development, the next step you may be wondering is, how do I deploy this and where is this deployed into? Well, we can take a look at Stackery environments. If you've used AWS before, you may be familiar with how the fact that they have AWS accounts and sophisticated organizations can manage multiple accounts within something called an AWS organization. But it's unclear still how to set up multiple environments inside of AWS. Should you create a separate account for every environment? Uh, and an environment here is something like production, staging, test, QA, uh, development. So should you set one of those up for each uh, one account for each environment? Do you need to share accounts across different environments? There's multiple ways to do this. Sometimes it depends on how you've already set things up. Maybe you do already have production and staging in the same AWS account, so you need to continue that. Within Stackery, we've come along and added this environment abstraction on top of AWS. So an environment in Stackery is a namespace location within specific AWS accounts and regions. It can be in a number of different AWS accounts. 
Uh, I've got many here and different regions. Inside of those namespaced locations, I have a location for parameters. These parameters get set inside of AWS Systems Manager in my own account. And a place for secrets where I may want to store uh, credentials like database passwords, API keys, anything that I need to make sure is confidential, stored encrypted at rest, and that I can tightly scope the permissions around to be accessed at runtime. Once I've got these environment namespaces, I can then deploy stacks into an environment. So if I go back to my Wild Rides application and I look at the deployment screen for it, I can see all of the deployments that I have a version of my Wild Rides workshop running inside of. And I can view into a given uh, environment. This gives me a, a similar layout to what we were looking before when we were designing our application. But now I can see an overlay of metrics telling me how many times my function has been invoked. We see an invocation from earlier today uh, during the demo when I requested a unicorn. I can quickly get access to the logs and the x-ray traces to see what's going on when a given request fails, let's say. So we're tying all the components of your application together and making it very easy for you to locate them inside of your AWS account. Lastly, once you've built up and architected, developed, tested your application, for ongoing development purposes, you may want to have CICD to help you deploy that out safely and securely. We can set up, I'm going to hop into another demo stack I have here. We can set up a number of uh, different features that are enabled whenever you create pull requests as one for, as, as the first step in your CICD pipeline. So here I have set up dependency vulnerability checks and a deployment preview. When I hop into my GitHub stack um, and uh, we support GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and CodeCommit. And for each of those on-prem and in the cloud as well. So here I've got my GitHub stack, and I'm going to look at a pull request I opened up. Inside of this pull request, because I enabled those verification options, I have automatically the output of dependency vulnerability checks. This is a check that is performed by checking out the source code in a code build job inside of my own AWS account. That code build job looks for every function inside of my stack. It descends into that function, figures out where its source code is and what runtime it is. Here we've got one function and it's written in Node.js, so we run NPM audit. And that tells us that I must have misconfigured my dependencies. I have a JS YAML dependency that has three known vulnerabilities that have been fixed in a later version. So this tells me I need to fix something before I merge this in. I also can see a preview deployment of my stack. This is a sandboxed, isolated deployment that exists as long as this pull request is open allowing me to easily jump in and maybe if I made some changes to how this Lambda function works, I can make a curl request to this API route. And based on that, I can find out did the right entry get recorded into my users table. So I could do some manual validation, both myself as the developer who created this change and also any collaborators who I might have asked to review the changes that I made in my Git repository. We also support functional testing, which allows you on every change that you propose into, that you make into your pull request, it will spin off another ephemeral sandboxed environment uh, deployment. And then it will step through every function that you have and run tests for them. 
So in every node function, we'll run npm test. For every Python function, we'll run Python test or PyTest. And it can find the information about the location of things like your API routes and your DynamoDB tables, allowing you to run end-to-end -end integration tests that hit an API route, check the table to see if a record was inserted properly, and report back to your Git provider if all the tests passed or failed. So this gives you the beginning bits of your CICD pipeline, allowing you to validate and verify everything as part of your pull requests. Once you've made a change to your Git repository or to the, the main branch of development, say you merged in a pull request, now you want to deploy this out safely and securely in an automated fashion across a couple of environments. Here, I've set up a uh, continuous delivery pipeline. This pipeline goes through two stages. First, my development stage, and then my production stage, these two environments. So as I started to make changes to my demo API 6 stack, once those changes were merged, it automatically deployed into my development environment. It then ran the vulnerability tests. Because those passed, it then automatically promoted into production. I can also set it up to verify or wait for a human to manually approve a promotion into production. But this gives me, in either case, a secure, clear, automated mechanism for setting up a pipeline of stages to deploy through on the way to production. So that's everything that I wanted to share today. I hope that you've seen through this uh, how Stackery really it provides the layer of workflow processes for teams of developers to collaborate as they design, develop, and deliver modern applications on AWS. Let me hand it back to Tim to talk through some of what our customers have seen as they've adopted Stackery. Thanks, Chase. To connect some of the dots between what Chase was showing you and then the value that it provides to organizations like yours, um, I'll walk through a few example customers. One, there's a, there's a set of similarities across all our entire customer base. I think one important thing to know is that um, our capabilities, we really focus on building uh, our platform for the enterprise. So if you're a, you know, a single developer, or you work with just a few developers on a, on a small team, um, Stackery could still work for you, but know that a lot of our capabilities are really geared toward teams working in the enterprise. In particular, um, we see our biggest set of customers coming from mid to large enterprises or tech focused startups. Um, in either case, they have cloud teams that care about building, delivering, and running modern applications. And the, the main areas of value that they are looking to deliver uh, to their organization is uh, speed. They want to bring out new innovation to their customers faster. Uh, they want to reduce costs, especially the costs associated with building and then running and maintaining critical applications. And in almost every case, our customers need to adhere to rigorous security requirements. So to give you a few examples, um, I'll, uh, one recent one uh, earlier this year nationwide, they launched an app called Nimble, N-I-M-B-L. It's a debt consolidation app, and they rely on Stackery for this revenue generating kind of web and mobile app. They're targeting, uh, they estimate they'll have about 10 million users on it. And the reason that they chose Stackery is to streamline the management of their environments as they go from test to pre-production and, and QA to uh, production. They also um, look to Stackery to reduce the time that it takes to just uh, oper operationally run the, the application. Uh, they were able to get to market really fast with this, and this is something that uh, for doing an iteration on updating an application used to take them days. Now it's something that takes you know, hours. Um, they also like the visual layout of what applications look like that you saw Chase show you. Helps them really quickly onboard a new developers and contractors and collaborate with the business owners because they can visualize what the application does. So those are some of the big areas of value for Nationwide. 
Um, one of our more recent customers, Northern Trust, they rely on us for their very first SaaS offering. So Northern Trust is a large financial services institution out of Chicago in the, in the Midwest of the United States. And this is their first foray into SaaS applications for their customers. And they chose Stackery for a few reasons. One is they wanted to get to market as fast as they could with minimal uh, infrastructure overhead. They didn't want to hire people to manage Kubernetes or whatever their you know underlying infrastructure would otherwise be in a containerized environment. They didn't want to spend money on those resources and they wanted to get their product out quickly. However, because they're a large financial services institution, they have extremely rigorous security requirements and uh, Stackery met all of those. And um, I think a final thing is as they build out their applications, AWS in particular has a has a, a best practice around well architected applications and Stackery helps customers achieve that. And that's something that Northern Trust wanted to adhere to. Um, branch financial or branch ins insurance rather is um, just like nationwide is a, uh, a, a an insurance uh, organization. We have a set of customers like Branch that are smaller startups in typically fintech or health tech that are aiming to compete with those larger organizations like a nationwide. So they use us to consistently uh, or bring consistency to their environments. They refactor their application lifecycle workflow with us. They use us to quickly prototype ideas and build out their infrastructure as code automatically with that uh, gen code generation capability that you saw Chase demonstrate. And it helps them just be extremely fast. We also, um, because they're in the financial services uh, realm, they had to um, prove SOC 2 compliance and they use Stackery and our um, auditing and compliance capabilities to help them go through that audit successfully and really quickly. And then one final example is MasterStream. They provide a set of SaaS applications to an ERP to um, the telco industry. And the biggest area where they see value with Stackery is they used us to refactor a monolithic application, one that lived in the cloud, but it was just built in a traditional way. And they modernized it to microservices, managed services with Stackery. The result was they reduced their cloud spend by 90%. And it allowed them not only to reduce their spend, but just move much more athletically and quickly as they bring new innovation to their customers. These sorts of examples are the kind of thing we see day in and day out with our customers. Um, where I'll wrap up <clears throat> uh, is on this final slide. If any of this that uh, Chase walked through or some of the value that you hear from our customers is interesting to you, it's really easy to get started. So just visit us at stackery.io and you can sign up for free to get started. It takes just a matter of seconds. We have a fantastic set of getting started resources. And then as you start to use Stackery, um, there is support built into the application. So um, you can get your answers, question, uh, your questions answered by um, our experts that are um, some of the, you know, the, the most knowledgeable and experienced serverless uh, engineers in the world. So um, sign up, give it a go if, uh, if this is something you and your cloud team are, are looking to do. And with that, we thank you for your time. Uh, Alexei, I'll pass it back to you and then we could take it from there. Tim and Chase, uh, thank you so much for uh, this great presentation. Uh, we at, at Compasso, we are really excited in uh, building this bridge among uh, Stackery and all of our uh, customers in Brazil that run cloud uh, uh, environments and that have been spending a lot of time in thinking day to day how to improve their development strategies, their efficiency, their security around their current uh, cloud applications. So, uh, I, I would just remember here we still have a, a few minutes uh, to all of you uh, present in the call. Uh, we have here the a small panel for uh, questions and answers. So if you have any any questions, we are on our stream mode, so you would need to write them down uh, so that we can perhaps go through uh, any of these topics. 
And while you guys think if you have any questions, I would just like to say that it's a great honor for Compasso to, to uh, be investing in initiatives like this, where we try to help more and more our customers to improve their maturity around using cloud environments. We know all the challenges that we all face uh, day to day in, in uh, building more efficient, more secure applications that cost less. And, and uh, all of this, we, we really believe that uh, Stackery is, uh, is uh, really someone that could help many of our customers here. So uh, Tim and Chase, I'm, I'm really uh, thankful for uh, your time today. I'm just checking here if we have any specific uh, questions. Uh, we are, are also uh, available uh, to all of our customers. Uh, if, if you need any introductions or any channels to talk to Stackery, we would be more than happy on facilitating. Uh, we, we have been spending some time with our solution architects going through uh, Stackery's solutions and making sure that we prepare our teams to be able to support and help our customers that wish to evaluate and go through Stackery's platform. So I think uh, we are all set. Uh, I think the, the presentation was really very clear. We don't have any specific questions here. So Tim and Chase, again, thank you so much to, for spending this uh, precious time with us today. Thanks all of our customers for being here with us today again. Uh, stay safe, take care, and uh, we hope we can all talk to each other soon again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.